now with the week? The Lord is good. All the time. All the time. The Lord is good. Please uh, follow with me as the call to worship. Give ear to God's teaching. Incline your ears to parables and dark sayings of old. We gather to hear the stories of our ancestors, ancient stories of God's mighty deeds of power. Do not hide them from your children. Tell the coming generations of God's glorious deeds. We gather to sing God's praises and proclaim the wonders of our God. Come to the font of living water. Drink deeply from the waters of life. We gather to drink abundantly from the wellspring of our salvation. We gather as people in the world. Please repeat our opening prayer together. Holy, Holy mystery, mystery, grant, grant us the courage to drive deep into the teachings of our ancestors, that we might have the benefits of God's saints of old. Holy see We see the humility of the to follow the day. We 
everybody knows my brother Rod, case number one truck driver. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, never truck driver. <laughs> I'm not going to take that title away from my dad. <laughs> Rod, welcome. And uh, we'll be hearing a little bit, we'll be hearing from you a little later. Anyone else? I thought you had these, uh, our nieces. This is the way you do that. <laughs> Son, you got all the time. Son, you got hold up your hand.
now go to God in prayer, and we want to first of all pray for our youth. And today we want to pray for their salvation. We want to pray for their salvation. That they would all receive Jesus Christ by faith. Lord, let salvation spring up within our children that they may obtain salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And so we present our children and our youth to you today. Holy God, we come to worship this morning, thanking you for reminding us once again that you are Lord, you are Lord of all, you're Lord over all. You're Lord of our days. You're Lord of our nights. You're Lord of our world. You're Lord of your church. You're Lord of our past. You're Lord of our present. You're Lord of our future. You reign sovereign over all, and you are never caught by surprise. Never at a loss for what to do. Never overwhelmed by the creation, nor by the creatures you have made. We trust in your eternal purposes. We rest in your beautiful grace. May our hearts become more deeply attuned to your action in your world we might demonstrate the humility, the obedience of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Eternal God, we come before you this morning and we present each and every person who is here. Each of us has our own little problems. Lord, we present all those problems you and we lay them at the foot of the cross, we lay them on the altar. Father, we ask a blessing on each and every person who is here today. We ask that you bless us all and our families, wherever they may be. We ask that you bless our homes, be with us in our homes, be with us in our jobs, and especially at this time, Father, be with all the farmers around us. Bless each and every one. May they uh, reap their crops in safety. May they reap bumper crops. May you bless their crops. May you bless their hands as they work. Bless their machines. Keep their machines going. Bless each and every person who governs us. Bless our president at this time in these terrible times around the world. Be with him. Strengthen him. Bless all leaders, let them know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Put all countries under the guidance and leadership of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We ask you to provide for each and every one of us. These are the blessings we ask in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us how to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
added to but with lyrics by the Catholic Church. It's the Ave Maria. I'd like to dedicate this to my friend Becky Hunley. Give us water to drink. 
And Moses said to them, Why do you find fault with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test, to the proof? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us? And our children and our cattle with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They're almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the rod with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massah and Meribah because of the fault finding of the children of Israel. And because they put the Lord to the proof by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Please uh, turn with me in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 21, found on page 26 of the Pew Bibles, the New Testament section. Matthew 21, 23 through 32. Found on page 27 of the Pew Bibles. And when Jesus entered the temple, the chief priest and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you a question. And if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John Whence was it? From heaven or from men? And they argued among themselves. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we are afraid of the multitude. For all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what a prophet I do these things. What do you think? A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterwards he repented and went. And he went to the second son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. He did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly, I say to you, the tax collector, and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the harlots believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterwards repent and believe him. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. There are words of our lips and the meditations of our hearts. Be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. From those two passages, God will supply all of our needs. God is in the supply business. God will supply all of our needs. The saying you have to be there to see it, to believe it. You just have to see it. It's a great way of introducing this Old Testament passage that we just read from Exodus 17. The power of God is an awesome thing. We serve an awesome, powerful God. And friends, let us not forget to tell our children how God brought us over, how God brought us through the waters, God brought us over the mountains, God brought us through all of the problems.
problems that life seems to throw at us. My friends, how could the children of God convey the wonder and the terror of water rushing forth? Not from a river, but from a rock. A rock on a mountain. Simply because Moses struck this rock with his staff. Imagine those stiff-necked people. They're about to stone Moses. And yet God responds in such an amazing way. These people who are living between the dangers of dying from thirst and the dangers of dying from snake bites that have been put there by a God who was amazed by their lack of faith. I know that doesn't apply to us today. We are all children of faith. God's power and authority are not hidden from us whose eyes are open, whose ears are open. The heavens declare the glory of God. When we get up in the morning, we know that it is God who took care of us through the night and brought us to this state of our lives. Yet the chief priests and the scribes, in the presence of Jesus Christ, God Almighty, in the presence of John the Baptist, could not accept the awesome power of an Almighty God. Even today, we meet people who say, don't confuse me with the facts. My mind is already made up. When some religious leaders uh, hemmed and they hawed and they stumbled to answer Jesus honestly, Jesus left them to play their own games. You see, I grew up in a society similar to this Old Testament society. When someone poses you with a question, you don't answer immediately with an answer. Many times you pose and you give them another question. A child asks the teacher, well, how does this happen? And the teacher could say, well, it happens this way. Or the teacher could say, well, have you thought of this other scenario? And then the child begins to think so that the child has the answer permanently embedded in the child's mind. Jesus offered them a parable that reminds us that we are to be sincere when we are dealing with God. The word sincere is, means some tension. Sin is without, and Sarah comes from wax. Uh, so in the good old days when they sold pots and jumps, um, there might be a crack in the jug, so someone would just cover it with wax. And you would buy a pot that looks great, and you take it home, and it probably disintegrates. But somebody would say, I want a pot without wax. Sincere. So God wants us to be sincere, without cracks, without damage. Sometimes we need to say and do what is right, no matter what the cost. Well, today we might ask the question, how near is God? How near is Jesus? And if I wanted to give an immediate answer is, Jesus is very near. In fact, Jesus is as near as a prayer, as a thought, as a wish for someone. But in this life, we find that life is a journey. It's a journey which we discover the sufficiency of the God whom we serve. God will provide. We learn the sufficiency of God, especially when we learn to trust God. In life, we will be tested. I don't know what they do today. I'm an old, old guy, but 
In the good old days when uh, we had pencil and paper, uh, a teacher would come in one morning and suddenly say, take out a piece of paper. I go, oh no, a pop quest. <laughs> pop test. You would know he's giving us a pop test. And then there comes other tests, a scheduled test, a midterm test, and, uh, finals, and we would do all this testing. And the teacher would give you a pop quiz to see if you're learning what he or she is teaching. If everybody got zero on that pop quest, you would know, well, I'm going to go back. You know, they didn't get it. Well, similar life is like that. Life is such that as we live it, we need God to test us from time to time to see if we are getting the lessons. God's people and God's leaders have lessons to learn in this journey, this journey of life. And my friends, we really learn when it's tough. When the going is tough, the tough get going. And that's the time when we really learn about the lessons of life. We learn in times of uncertainty. We learn in times of delayed answers from God. We learn in times of delayed gratification. We learn in times when solutions to our problems take a while. We walk by faith, not by sight. Difficult times, difficult days, difficult periods of our lives may leave us wondering whether God is there. Sometimes we wonder, is God with me? Is God listening to me? Is God hearing me? Has God changed telephone companies and given us another telephone line and I've, I've missed his number? Where are we in this puzzle? Has God brought us this far to leave us? No, I declare God has brought us this far. And God will never leave us nor forsake us. God has done the best God could do. God has given us Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, just for you and just for me. And no matter what immediate circumstances or problems we find ourselves in at this time, God is listening. God is paying attention. God is is more. Well, doubts often arise from false expectations. Doubts often arise from false expectations. Here are the people in the desert, in the wilderness, and they began to thirst for water in the wilderness. So that they complained against Moses. And guess what? They had forgotten that God had just brought them out of slavery. They would forgotten that when they got out there, God was dropping manna every morning. They forgot every morning they got up and there was manna for them to eat. They would forgotten God had brought them over the wilderness, over the rivers, over the Nile. God had brought them there and at one stage God brought them over a river and they walked over on dry land and all of the Egyptian warriors were drowned in that river. So they forgot all of that because they had no water. Doubts cause us to fear the worst. No matter, we will die, they said, in just a few days if we don't have water. They were looking at the problem and not looking at an awesome God. My friends, I encourage you not to look at your problems, but to turn to God Almighty. So we lose perspective when we look at the problems and we do not look in the face of God. My friends, even in great doubt, know that God cares. God loves you. So doubts often arise from false expectations on our parts, but then doubts arise 
But God's leaders must obey God. Moses had no choice but to turn to God and to look to God. There's a hymn which says, Whatever I do, wherever I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, his faithful follower I will be. For by his hand he leadeth me. And Moses knew that. It's easy to be a leader when everything's going well and everybody's happy and everybody's fat and everybody's having a good time. Well, leadership is a piece of cake. But it's a different story when they're grumbling against you. It's a different story when they want to stone you. It's a different story when all of the people are discontented. Leadership is not easy. Moses had to struggle with doubt and fear, the doubt and fear of the people as well as his own doubts and his own fears. I mean, they were within minutes of stoning him. He could hear the people. He could hear their discontentment. But he had to look to God for guidance. Leadership looks to God, not to discontentment. So God told Moses, and you just heard me read this, and I'm going to paraphrase it a little. Moses, Exodus 17, 5, pass on before the people. God says, I know they want to stone you, but just walk before them. Walk with your elders. Walk with the rod that you struck the Nile. And I, God, will stand before you. And at the rock, smite you. And water will come out so the people will drink. So Moses did exactly as God said. And when the water came out, he called that place Massah, which is proof. Proof that God is. Proof that God exists. Proof that God cares. Proof that God answers your needs. Proof that God knows your needs. Proof that God will provide your needs. He called it Massa. The one word covered all that. The one Hebrew word. And then he called the other word Meribah. Meribah. And that means contention. Discontentment. means anger of the leader. It means all of these words that so often come to us. Meribah. Contention. Massa proof and Meribah contention. Because the people tempted and tried the patience of the Lord, saying, Is God with us? And is God with us now? Moses led by going forward on faith, doing as thus says the Lord. When they were about to stone him, the Lord said, Never mind, I'm with you. Let's walk before them with your elders. Walk before them with your staff. And I'm going to show you the rock, smite the rock. And the rock will produce enough water for all these people and their cattle and their children. My friends, like Moses, whatever God says to do, we should do it. I mean, I, I don't know that I would have done it. I know rocks don't produce water. I know that, but God said, smite the rock. Okay. God said it. I'm going to do it. That's all there is to it. He smote the rock. And a river of water poured out for everyone. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And obedience glorifies God. So in times of doubt, God is gracious and God will come near. In times of doubt, God will come near. Moses obeyed God. He struck the rock in Mount Horeb. God was standing with him. God said, I will stand before you. God was standing with him. And God provided the needed water for a thirsty, doubting 
God supplied their need for water. God supplies your needs for water and all of your needs. You may have to wait a little while for the answer, but God is there. I assure you, God will provide for you. The answer is to keep on praying. Keep on trusting. Keep on putting your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. Keep on and keep on. Push. Pray until something happens. And I assure you, as children of God, God will have something happen for your good. If God is able to provide water over a, out of a rock for a doubting, unbelieving people, God can and God will supply your needs. And God can and will supply all of our needs. The hymn says, God our maker, thou provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come. Raise the song of harvest home. My friends, God will provide your needs. Amen. Let us now stand and repeat hymn number eight. I repeat number 884, the first page of it. Hymn 884. 884. We do that together. Hymn 884. We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations. The source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love, we believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the Savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer. And the grace equal to every need. We believe in the Word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as a sufficient rule of both of faith and of practice. We believe in the Church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will of the realized in human society. And in the family of God, where we are all brothers and sisters, we believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. There it is, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Now please repeat with me the prayer of invitation to the offering, found in the bulletin. And together, let each of us know not our own interests, but the interests of others. In so doing, we share the mind of Christ. May we share the message of our gifts and dedicate ourselves to lives of service
and every one of us be blessed. May God supply all of our needs. May this offering be blessed. May it be used to the glory of God here and throughout the world. Now please turn with me to hymn 692. Hymn 692.
to bring in your benediction, bulletin. Benediction together, we repeat that. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort in love, any sharing in the Spirit, complete God's joy by thinking the same way, having the same love, being united and agreeing with each other. Do this and you will live. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious on you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen.